This is an easy RJ45 connector. And this is a standard RJ45 connector. And from a distance, they both look the same, but they're not. So which one should we choose for our home or business network? Well, stick around and you'll find out. I'm Michael Scott and not the one from the office. I'm not superstitious, but I am I am a little stitious. If you've ever crimped an ethernet cable and stared at the wire order like it's a bomb defusal scene. Baby, you can do this. Well, you're not alone. Green is good, and red is good, and yellow is good, and clip whatever you want. Now who can tell me what he did wrong? In this video, <laughs> I'm going to show you exactly how to install both connector types. The easy RJ45 connector and the standard RJ45 connector. And I will explain the advantages and disadvantages of both connector types. Then I'll tell you which one you should choose for your home or business network. So first, why are they called easy RJ45s? Easy is basically shorthand for pass-through RJ45 connectors. However, the most common connector type is the standard RJ45 or non-pass-through connector which has been used since way back in the caveman days. Well, not that far back. The standard RJ45 connector was created way back in 1987. Let's take a close-up look and compare each connector. When it comes to size and appearance, they both look identical. But look closely at the tip of the connector. The EZ connector has eight holes for the eight copper wires to pass through. The standard RJ45 has no holes. This means each plug has a different way to install it. So let's start with the standard RJ45 connector installation. We'll use a Cat6 cable for this setup, as well as a Cat6 UTP non-pass-through gold-plated connector. And all these product links will be listed below. The tools you'll need for this installation are a wire stripper and a standard Cat5e or Cat6 Ethernet crimper. At this point, you could put on a Cat6 boot cover if you want. Cat6 boot covers help protect the fragile RJ45 connectors. However, these boot covers are not mandatory, and if the cable you're installing will not be moved, then a boot cover may not be necessary. First, strip the wire back to about one to one and a half inches. Next, separate all four pairs into eight single wires. And then straighten all eight wires. Just a heads up, the straighter and flatter you make these wires, the easier the installation. So take your time. Next, align the wires into the T568B configuration. The T568B configuration is the most popular. So once all eight wires are straight and flat as possible, put them in the correct order from left to right. Orange, white, orange. Green, white, blue blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. Once the wires are in the correct order, make sure they're all flat and straight as possible, and they should be pushed together very closely. Next, you want to trim the wires straight across. The length of the wire should be about three quarters of an inch. This installation requires more precision when it comes to inserting the eight copper wires into the plug. These connectors are also known as non-pass-through connectors because the eight copper wires are seated all the way to the end of the plug, but do not pass through the end like the easy RJ45 plugs. The trick here is to cut the length of all eight wires to the ideal length so the shielded part of the cable goes as far as possible into the connector. The further it goes, the better. You want the least amount of exposed copper wire as possible. Now insert all eight wires into the RJ45 connector. Go slowly and make sure all eight wires go up straight in the correct order. Sometimes these wires can kink up. 
especially if the wires aren't straight enough. Once the wires are inserted all the way, take a close look at the color configurations. Make sure all eight wires are in the correct order and are touching the end of the connector. If you cut the wires correctly, the blue sheath of the cable should be inserted into the RJ45 connector. The idea is to have the least amount of exposed wires as possible. Once everything looks good, insert the connector into the RJ45 crimping tool. Make sure it's all the way in and then squeeze the handle. You should hear a snap. This process permanently connects the plug to the wires. Next, pull the plug out of the crimping tool and inspect the connection. If it looks good, now it's time to test the cable. And I'll use a network cable tester. This will verify if all eight wires are fully connected. And as you can see, our connector is all good. However, if you do not have a network cable tester, you can plug this connector into your network and see if it works. So what are the advantages of using a standard RJ45 connector? First, there are no exposed wire ends at the front. Everything stays inside the plug. Second, there is no dependency on a blade cut being perfect every time. Sometimes those specialized crimper blades can become dull, which leaves some wires cut and others not cut. And third, more universal tooling. Almost any standard crimper works with standard RJ45s. Also, some installers trust standard RJ45s for long-term durability, especially in tight spaces, patch panels, or anywhere cables get flexed a lot. Standard RJ45s just seem to last longer. But what about the disadvantages of a standard RJ45 connector? First, it's quite a bit harder for beginners. Getting all eight wires even and fully seated is the pain point. And this process takes some patience. And even when you think you have it correct, you'll go to crimp the wires only to find out one or more wires didn't reach the end. And second, it's just more time consuming, especially for beginners. So now let's install the easy RJ45 connector, also known as a pass-through connector. We'll use a Cat6 cable for this setup as well as a Cat6 EZ RJ45 pass-through connector. And all these product links will be listed below. The tools you'll need for this installation are a wire stripper and a specialized EZ RJ45 crimping tool. First, strip the wire back to about one to one and a half inches. At this point, you could put on a Cat6 boot cover if you want. Cat6 boot covers help protect the fragile RJ45 connectors. However, these boot covers are not mandatory, and if the cable you're installing will not be moved, then a boot cover may not be necessary. Next, separate all four pairs into eight single wires. and then straighten all eight wires. Just a heads up, the straighter and flatter you make these wires, the easier the installation. Next, align the wires into the T568B configuration. The T568B configuration is the most popular. So once all eight wires are straight and flat as possible, put them in the correct order from left to right. Orange, white, orange. Green, white, blue. Blue, white, green. Brown, white, brown. Once the wires are in the correct order, make sure they're all flat and straight as possible. And they should be pushed together very closely. And because this is an easy pass-through connector, the length of the wires doesn't matter. So now slowly and gently, push all the wires through the connector until the wires come out the other end. 
And from here, you can validate the color order. If it's correct, it's time to crimp the RJ45. If it's not correct, then pull the wires back out. And then reorder the wires and then push them back in. To crimp an easy RJ45 connector, use the specialized easy RJ45 crimping tool. Push the plug all the way through and then squeeze down on the handle until you hear a snap. And all the wires on the end should be cut off as well, leaving you with a perfect RJ45 connection. If all the wires are not cut off, then squeeze the handle one more time to finish the job. Once everything looks good, you can test the plug with a network cable tester. So what are the advantages of using an easy RJ45 connector? The first and most important advantage is that you can see the wire order before crimping. There's no more wait and see if it works. The second advantage is it's faster terminations for beginners and high volume jobs. And the third advantage is cleaner seating because you can pull the wires tight, reducing slack inside the plug. Less slack means a better quality connection. So what are the disadvantages of using an easy RJ45 connector? Well, first, you need a specialized pass-through compatible crimper with a clean cutting blade. Second, if the crimper doesn't cut flush or the blade is dull, it can leave tiny wire ends sticking out. This can cause scratching, corrosion over time, or in rare cases, contact issues. And third, some pass-through designs can be pickier with thicker Cat6 conductors. So do easy connectors make your internet faster? Well, no. If both terminations are done correctly, your performance comes from correct wire order, solid contact on each pin, tight jacket strain relief, and good cable quality. So the big question is, which one should you choose for your home or business network? An easy RJ45 or a standard RJ45? Well, here is the simplest way to choose. If you're a beginner or a DIY home user, you should use easy pass-through connectors with a high-quality crimper. You'll get clean, repeatable results faster, and you can visually verify the order every time. However, if you're doing a professional installation for a home or small business network, and you want maximum set-it-and-forget-it reliability, then use standard RJ45 connectors. Either way, don't cheap out on connectors. Bad ends are the number one reason cables mysteriously fail. So here's a quick how to not mess this up checklist. First, pick one wiring standard and stick to it on both ends and for your entire network. The T56AB is common in most home installations. Second, make sure the cable jacket goes into the connector far enough for strain relief. Third, for easy connectors, confirm the wires are cut perfectly flush after crimping. Fourth, test every cable. Even a cheap tester is better than guessing. So here's the golden rule. For beginners, use easy connectors. For pros with good technique, use the standard connector. In both cases, quality tools plus testing matter more than connector type. All right, guys and gals, now that you know which connector type to use for your home or business network, make sure to check out this video right here. You're gonna love it. And with that, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And for God's sakes, smash the bell icon. And I'll see you real soon. High five. Peace.